Hello again. The Taiwan Straits Exchange Foundation, or CIF, has held its seventh board meeting, re-electing Chiang Ping Kun as chairman. Chiang said he will lead the foundation to strengthen contact with the Association for Relations Across the Taiwan Straits, based on China's mainland. He said the two organizations had uh, common views on the reduction of crime, food safety cooperation, the quarantine inspection of agricultural products, and exchanges on financial cooperation, investment, fisheries, and education. Chiang also said it's the CIF's responsibility to provide a diversified and qualified platform for economic and trade cooperation across the Straits. China's tourism authority says the number of inbound tourists has dropped for three consecutive months. In October alone, foreign visits to China dropped by more than 11 percent. Pandang takes a look at efforts across the country to find a way out of the situation. China's tourism experienced its sharpest drop in October since the 2003 SARS epidemic. Authorities try to use the Beijing Olympics to boost the industry, but the financial crisis has hampered the plan. Most foreign visitors to China come from the United States, Europe, and Japan, all hit hard by the crisis. From what we know, consumer confidence keeps declining in markets like the United States and Europe. This has put significant pressure on our business. Economies in major Western countries have entered a period of recession. I think the real impact on China's tourism will only truly appear in the first half of 2009. As less foreigners plan trips to China, travel agencies are trying to boost business by fully exploiting the potential of the domestic market. Many have put together travel packages to warm destinations as winter approaches. Some have cut prices on foreign tours by a third. Foreign exchange rates have changed a lot recently. It's very economical to go abroad this season. For all of us, can save up to 20,000 yuan a trip to Europe. Authorities are also confident that domestic demand will keep the tourism industry moving in the right direction. China has a vast domestic tourism market, and the economy is in good shape. I believe the tourism industry will develop quickly. As competition in domestic tourism market becomes more fierce, authorities say travel agencies should enhance the competitiveness of their products to win more customers. Pan Zheng, CCTV. Heavy snow has hit northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, snarling road traffic and delaying flights. On Tuesday, temperatures in some northern Xinjiang cities dropped to 25 degrees Celsius below zero. Two major highways were partially closed, and at least 18 flights have been delayed so far. Meteorologists say cold air will hit most parts of the country in the next couple of days, with temperatures in some places expected to quickly drop more than 12 degrees. To some other news, a line of hungry locals outside Ivan Ramen no Noodle Restaurant in Tokyo is a regular sight. But as Wan Duyan explains, the sight of a Western chef greeting his customers with a hot bowl is a rarity. Ramen was originally a Chinese recipe of broth soup, noodles, and various toppings. Now it's a unique culinary delight closer to the hearts of Japanese than sushi or tempura. 45-year-old New Yorker Ivan Orkin fills up a bowl with a measured amount of oil, fat, and flavorings, pours soup into the bowl, and finishes the dish by adding perfectly timed boiled noodles. Since the ramen shop opened in June 2007, Orkin's noodles have become a hit among locals. The restaurant now serves about 200 bowls of ramen a day, with only 10 seats in the restaurant. I've heard so much about Ivan Ramen that I used my holiday to come here. Orkin says he's been a ramen fan ever since he was a teenager, working for a Japanese restaurant in New York, and before working in French restaurants. Orkin quit cooking French cuisine to study Japanese in college. He then taught English in Japan and finally settled in a ramen-loving country in 2003 to master the national dish. Why did I choose ramen? Because it was a really interesting challenge. 
I didn't know how to make it. I never made ramen before, but I really enjoyed it. And I thought it was in every person's food, so I thought, what a great way to interact with all different types of people. Unlike many of the franchise ramen shops in Japan, Orkin went for a personal touch. He makes his own noodles and broth from scratch with local ingredients. Ivan Ramen may be one of the estimated 80,000 ramen shops across the country, but one city magazine ranks it among the top 10 best noodle shops in Tokyo this year. Walduyan, CCTV. Yummy. Well, finally, time now for a look at the weather forecast. Here's Hala Mohudin. Thanks and good morning. Well, we are looking at a fairly wet and windy day across much of China today, thanks to the arrival of this new strong cold front. We are expecting a large band of wet weather to stretch from central and eastern Inner Mongolia and Heilongjiang all the way down to Guizhou and Yunnan, with snowfall blanketing much of northern China. And some particularly heavy snow on the way up in eastern Jilin and eastern Liaoning. It's also going to feel much colder today as well, with temperatures dropping by 4 to 8 degrees from Gansu and northern Qinghai all the way through due to Inner Mongolia and Western Liaoning. And if you factor in the strong northerly winds, it's going to feel even colder than that, so do wrap up warm. Now, tomorrow that colder weather is set to move on to central and eastern China, although the Huanan region here should remain largely unaffected. Up in the north, we're expecting that snow to edge back, although it will continue up in eastern Heilongjiang, eastern Jilin and the Shandong Peninsula. Down in the south, we will see rain continuing across in the southwest and over in Jiangsu, Anhui and Zhou. Moving over to North America now, where rain and snow are forecast from Wyoming through the Great Lakes all the way up to western Quebec today. There's more snowfall on the way for blizzard hit Chicago as well, although it should be much lighter than recently. The heaviest of the snow will hit western and southern Quebec and eastern Ontario. Across in the west, we are expecting temperatures to keep falling with Wyoming and Nebraska dropping by over 10 degrees along with some more moderate to heavy snow. And finally, if we look ahead to tomorrow, those falling temperatures will move across to the Great Lakes all the way down through to Texas. That snow in Chicago is set to ease off, although temperatures will drop sharply and most likely dropping to below zero. And that's it for this edition of Worldwide Watch. I'm Li Xing. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to CCTV International.